Okay, today I want to talk about one of the most fun matches I've ever played in this game. This, in my mind, is why I keep playing this game. This is the best this game has to offer, in my opinion. I truly believe that decision making is the most interesting part of this game and seeing your decisions you made 30 seconds ago, a minute ago, five minutes ago pay off is one of the most fun parts about this video game and you're gonna see that in this game. I really really enjoyed this um, and it's only possible that like this a game like this is only possible when there's no aircraft carriers and there's no overwhelming overpowered high explosive spam from long range and you'll notice there's no tier 10s <laughs> so we're not in that tier 10 crazy campy meta right now we're in tier 9 tier 8 tier 7 games which is i think the best part about this game um i likely will be playing in the future even more tier 9 tier 8s tier 7s i kind of think because i had so much fun with this one i was just doing my snowflakes to get steel from my tier 9 ships and this game popped up right near the end of uh end of my uh run of doing doing my snowflakes so i really enjoyed this and the big reason is pushing is a viable tactic when there's no aircraft carrier to in set up an instant crossfire right you're not punished heavily for pushing in when there's not really much for HE spammers. So notice what's on my side. We have three ships, basically. Our cruiser isn't really going to be that helpful in uh, C7, and our Vladivostok is AFK for now. So it's it's there's very few of us here, and I do not expect people to push in, okay? Because I'm just so used to everybody camping at the back. I pop my speed boost, and I push in hard because... I like pushing in and having fun with that. I enjoy that playstyle. So, you know, I see a Nagato and I'm like, oh, I'm feeling confident, really good. Oh, there's a Freddy. Oh, there's a Palmer. And a Mayoko. And an Alaska. And the Alaska is pushing hard on my flank. Oh no! <laughs> this moment right here, I was like, oh no, I'm gonna die. <laughs> and that was like such a good feeling because it wasn't, oh, I'm going to die because of some stupid game mechanic that there's nothing I can do about. There is a decision I made I that I'm getting punished for. And it's so nice. It feels so nice. So now, we're down half HP. The Most of the enemy team is over here pushing hard. And we have to deal with this somehow. So what are we going to do? Well... We have to set up a crossfire, but because we're not a CV, we can't just instantly set up a crossfire on whomever we want to, whenever we want to. We have to position properly and smartly to keep this push from happening, right? It's really, really cool. So I want you to notice, okay, that in my brain, at this point, I was thinking, I need to set up a crossfire, okay? This is at 16 minutes, 30 seconds on the timer, up in the top right. Okay? And I will let you know once the crossfire has been set up, okay? It's going to take a while, and I love it. I love that positioning takes time, and you have to think about it, and you have to really... You have to use your brain, and you get rewarded or punished based on the decisions you make. It's such a good feeling. I, I love it. I, I had a lot of fun with this one, and it's really cool to see... An enemy team push because I'm so used to being the one that has to just YOLO push in to do this kind of fun semi brawling but making things happen kind of thing. And so here I'm thinking, well, maybe I can set up a crossfire here if I just kind of sit behind this island. That's kind of my thought process. But the problem with sitting back here is we actually aren't going to be that useful because you'll notice there's a cyclone. It's going to happen in 2 minutes, 24 seconds. So if we sit back here, you've got to remember it's 8 kilometers of detection. That's all we get. So we're never going to impact the battle because their team is just going to push onto the cap, kill everybody there, and then I'm just going to be stuck back here doing nothing to help my team. So I can't be here. So that's why I don't actually stop here. 
in a normal match, it would probably be a decent play to sit back here and try and crossfire the Fiji, Palmer, and Alaska from here. Um, but in this in this game, not going to work. So we have to keep going. And where do we set up a crossfire now? Well, hopefully our team is going to notice that the enemy team is pushing and come back from the 2-3 line. Um, but we can't count on that. At least our Vladivostok is woken up, so that's good. Right now, we just need to focus on staying alive until the Cyclone hits. That's that's my whole goal. We can't give up our life now when we are the top tier battleship in this game for our team. Our Palmer on our team has died already. We are the big top dog, and we need to make a Im big impact on this game, which we've already done a reasonable job. You know, 63k, it's not bad, especially for an Alsace that's worse than it was when I initially grinded through this um the dispersion's gotten reasonably quite a bit worse <laughs> compared to back in the day when it was released um but it's still a fun ship um it's just borgone is this ship but way better <laughs> which is why i don't really play alsace very much but as a quick rundown on this ship you got 12 380 millimeter guns they reload every 30 seconds or so they got okay dispersion, um, but mainly you're looking to hit broadsides just because your dispersion is kind of questionable at times. You're not really going to be hit hitting too much when it's bow on ship, um, but against broadsides, it can do some pretty solid stuff, like a Citadel on a Fiji. Pretty, pretty nice. Um, you get a speed boost, which is really nice in a game like this where we're going to eventually set up our crossfire. You can see it's not really a crossfire right now because... The enemy team is stopping at this, um, at these islands here. So our teammates in our cap actually aren't able to help us right now. So that's why I'm just continuing to run away. I can't push into this. I can't impact this when they're all angled to me and my teammates on their flank are, have an island in between them. So we'll get, we'll get the crossfire set up eventually, <laughs> but it just takes some time. And you'll notice that I'm not pushing in yet at even now, because the Cyclone still hasn't hit yet. Right? It says that it hit, but it's still a 33 kilometer Cyclone. You can't see it ticking down in the amount of view range you have. So that's something I need to work on personally, is not rushing in too soon when there's a Cyclone. Because there's this weird, really long delay from when a Cyclone starts to when it actually kicks in. Um, I, I would guess it's because maybe the max view range is 48 kilometers or something in there. I actually don't know what the maximum is. And then it starts ticking down from there. And it just takes a while to tick down to my view range of 33 kilometers, I guess. Um, but you'll see, I you know, I started pushing in again. And then I had to remind myself, wait, no, you can't push in until you see it start ticking down. And there it is. You can see it on the map and in the cyclone in the left top left corner there it's taking the down in numbers so now we know we can start to push back in and the enemy team will lose vision of us in a reasonable amount of time so it'd be really good to get this palmer out of the way but uh even if we can't we should be able to set up a crossfire here so what the plan is in my mind the most important position to be in on this entire map at this moment in time is actually where our, our Helena is. In that choke point there is the most powerful position because the enemy team essentially has to come one by one around that corner and hopefully face people in the top of our cap zone, maybe where the Vladivostok is, at the same time as where the Helena is. So that's that's the powerful crossfire that I've, I'm envisioning, okay? I maybe didn't think about it all the way back when I was on the 10 line or the 9 line, but I was thinking, where can we set up a crossfire the whole time, right? And we're we're a good five minutes past when I thought I need to set up a crossfire. So it, I love this, the decision making and the, I need to do this to help my team win and then go and try and do it. Because you'll notice we're down by like 100,000 HP and I think we're uh, down on like a single ship or a couple ships. So we need to make something happen here if we're going to hope to win this game. Um, if we don't make a play, they just win. That is essentially what happens. And I love, love, love games like this. This is why I play this game. 
Not for the random camp fest spam HE, not for the, oh, I got killed by a carrier and there's nothing I can do about it, but for the games where you have to make decisions and you have to make plays in order to win the game and or even try to win the game. I don't play this game for the blowouts. I play this game for games exactly like this one. The close nail biters where people are pushing in, people are making plays. It's awesome. It is so good. And, well, we need to kill an Azashio. Let's be honest. We can't just let that be on our flank. <laughs> That's one of the scariest destroyers in the entire game for battleships. Even at tier 10. This It's nasty. So, um, it... If you don't know, its torps are deep waters, and they can only hit battleships and carriers. But they do a ton of damage. And they're incredibly stealthy, too, so good luck dodging them. So what I do here is our Akatsuki spots one torpedo. So my goal is to barely dodge that torpedo on the right-hand side of my ship, and then I'm hoping the torpedo spread will make it so the other torpedo next to it goes on the left side of my ship. That's how I dodged that one. I just thought of, like... Okay, a general torpedo spread is going to have all the torps lined up reasonably well spaced apart. So if I barely dodge one torpedo, then the next one should be on the other side of my ship. Hypothetically, you know how torp spreads work. They can be RNG based as well. But we dodged it. That's good. We save, you know, around 20,000 HP because we didn't take that torpedo. Um, and now we've got our crossfire pretty much set up. Unfortunately, our Vladivostok is basically dead at this point, so uh, it's going to be difficult to actually make use of this, uh, <laughs> actually make use of this crossfire, but we have to make the most out of it at this point, because you can see we only have 63k HP to their approximately 200k. They're, they're over double what we got. Um, that'll help us uh, sitting in the Nagato like that, but three ships to deal with, all within eight kilometers. This is great. Look at this crossfire we have set up, right? This Freddy is stuck, and we need to make the most out of it while our Vlad is still alive. Obviously, the play for the Freddy is to kill the Vlad as fast as possible, and then angle into me. Um, we do have a Leon still, but Leons kind of have not the best dispersion, let's be honest. So, we got our hit in, we, the Vlad got a hit in, so this Freddy is on, you know, 20k HP now. We have to deal with that. And his secondaries are tearing me up. Um, I don't know if he has IFAG, but if he does, I mean, he'll full pen me everywhere, because I only have 32 millimeters. And fortunately, our Leon gets a really good hit, and I can finish him off, even if he's bow in. Really, really good stuff. Now I have to worry about torpedoes from the Fiji, because we know he has torpedoes. And there's a DD in that smoke in front of me as well, so I'm trying to dodge a crossfire of torpedoes right now. And this is the only way we win, is if I dodge all these torpedoes, kill the Fiji, rush down the Shiratsuyu, Maybe kill the Nagato yet. Like, that's how we win this game. Uh, unfortunately, we just barely take the last torpedo from that DD. Um, and then we go down. But we get the Fiji in return. What a game, man. I had so much fun. It felt like my decision making actually mattered. And I want you to notice that it's approximately 8 to 10 minutes later from when I thought we need to set up a crossfire to actually setting up that crossfire. That's what's so good about this. You can't just instantly set something up to counter the enemy team like a CV would. You know, we ended up losing this game. Well played to the enemy team. They pushed. They won because they pushed so aggressively and so well. Um, I had a blast playing this one. This is this made me realize, again, why I play this game. This was just perfect. Um... But let's talk about uh, Alsace just real quick. So to talk real quick about how I have my Alsace set up, this is exactly how I played it in that match. We get reload mod, pretty standard. Concealment, damage control, very standard stuff. Um, not running a secondary build, because your secondaries uh, only pen 17 millimeters. And at this tier, uh, superstructures are 19 millimeters. So it's really not useful, I don't think. It's a lot of points to invest. The other thing is, I also only have a 10-point captain uh, in this battle. Uh, so I ran Expert Loader, because sometimes in Tier 10 games, you just have to shoot HE at a Bowian battleship. That's just how the game is played these days. And then pretty standard, just 10-point battleship commander. If you're wondering how I would spec this uh, for a 19-point commander, uh, we'll take a look at my Borgon captain right now. 
Um, I would spec, I would get the same four skills first, and then I would go fire prevention, basic survivability, and expert marksman. And that would be a standard tank 19 point build. If you want to go secondaries, it's it's a fun little meme. It's not amazing, but this is the captain I would do then instead. You want range and manual secondaries. To be honest, I don't think it's going to be good in the next patch. If you've seen my um, 10.0 PTS server uh, secondary testing, you'll know that it's not going to be very good. Um, just to note, uh, every battleship in the game is going to be very similar to the GK accuracy, except the premium American battleships. Those are kind of the exception. So that's Massachusetts, Georgia, and Ohio. Uh, but everything else is probably going to look basically like the GK. So not going to be the most useful in the upcoming patch, but it's, it's viable-ish for now. But the reason I run it on Republic, you can pen 21 millimeters with the small guns. Uh, same with Borgone. I sometimes run it on Borgone too. And that makes it a little more worth it to me if I can pen superstructures, uh, destroyer hulls more often, that kind of stuff. So that's kind of the uh, Alsace. I had a ton of fun with this ship. Um, if you enjoy Alsace at all, and you're thinking, what's the next steel ship I should get? Borgon. It is Alsace, but better dispersion, faster reload, faster ship, better maneuverability, you get a reload booster. <laughs> this ship is fun. This is a fun ship. Also, it has really good AA and good torpedo belt and doesn't take citadels from AP bombs. It's it's just a nice ship for the meta right now. Um, but yeah, that's the Alsace. I had a ton of fun with this ship and that game was just excellent. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you have a great day.